Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing great, as I always say, following the three H's of the channel and all that good stuff. And in this video, it's all about the deep woods. So, if that sounds like something you're interested in, get your gear together, pull up a stump, and come along. Thank you for watching. A few summers ago, 2019, me and my brother did a five day long through hike through the high Uintas Mountains in Utah. On our third night, we camped at this small lake. We ate and sat by the campfire for a couple hours and crawled into our tents about 10 p.m. At 10.30, my brother yelled out from his tent. He was about 20 yards away from me. I hopped out and he hopped out with his flashlight, obviously looking scared of something. I ran over to him, and I asked what had happened. He asked if I just said hi to him. Obviously I hadn't, because I was a ways away from him, and he saw me get out of my tent. He said something, said hi Tom to him, and it sounded exactly like me and it was a couple feet from his head where he was laying. We were both a little spooked about this, but he thought that maybe he was just hearing things. We went back to bed, and it happened again at 11.30, and then again at 1 a.m. We were really spooked, so I moved my tent next to his. I fired off a bunch of shots from my 9mm in all different directions around our tents. It didn't happen again the rest of the night, but we packed up our gear at first light and just left that area to continue our hike. It was weird, because he was the only one hearing it. I didn't hear anything, but he could swear it was my voice each time, the same inflection, the same pitch. So I used to live out in rural Missouri, about 30 to 40 miles west of St. Louis. Every night, around 10 to 11 p.m., a Chinook helicopter would fly over the area, including my house. It was always heading west. I always figured it was probably heading toward the Missouri Army National Guard base in Jefferson City or Fort Leonard Wood, which are 60 and 95 miles from where it passes over my house. This happened every night, so I was just kind of used to it after a while, flying over. I tried taking pictures of it a few times, but they didn't really turn out. So it was 2017. I was playing Fallout 4, and it just hit 3 a.m. While playing, I could hear the helicopter pass over. I didn't think too much of it. Five minutes pass. I hear the helicopter fly back over. I'm immediately weirded out. It's never flown over twice in one night. I look out the window. The helicopter is flying really low to the ground. It's got its spotlight on, looking in the field of my neighbor's property. He's a cattle farmer with a whole bunch of land. It circles around my property and my neighbors. It shines the light in a bunch of trees in the area and pauses there. A few minutes pass. It takes off back west. I start thinking, what the hell are they seeing or looking for out there in the woods? After five more minutes, nothing. But a few minutes later it flies back over. The same thing, hovering low. The spotlight's on. I'm afraid to stand near the window because they definitely have infrared. I'm fully expecting a hail of bullets to gun me down from a machine gun if it got too close. Even more terrified of what the hell could be out there that they're looking for. The helicopter just hovers, looking for another ten minutes around my property. Then it flies off again. And... You guessed it, 
Five minutes later, it comes back. This time, it's got the searchlight on my house and my property. It's looking in all the windows and trees, all around, even the tall grass. I stand next to the window to try and see where the helicopter is at. The spotlight shines directly on me through the window. I freeze. Right after, the helicopter turns around and flies back west and didn't come back for the night. I have a few more shorter stories about that helicopter, but that's probably the weirdest one. What were they looking for at 3 o'clock in the morning? To preface this, this is not completely deep in the woods, but it's far enough, and I thought it was worth sharing anyways. I was present when this event happened, but I don't remember a whole bunch of it. Anyways, when I was around three... We used to visit my family in this rancho, a farm, in the middle of nowhere in Mexico. Aside from a pretty crappy village nearby, there was nothing but woods and mountains. The farm where we were was really close to this forest that led up to these mountains. You could see the top of the mountains from inside the house, a great view. Anyways, there was this one time we had been visiting, and this was during the time that one of my aunts had been suffering from this mysterious illness. It was like an occasional massive panic attack or a seizure of some sort. They were really intense. They were like a combination of a seizure and an asthma attack, hence why some of us thought that it was a panic attack. They would happen once a week, maybe twice, but then they started to happen every night. Not only that, they would happen specifically at midnight. One thing that I do vividly remember was seeing my aunt during one of these attacks. They didn't seem natural at all. She looked like she was literally being choked by something. My parents weren't supposed to let me see this as a little kid, but I'm pretty sure that they forgot since they were obviously busy tending to my aunt. One night, my uncle Poland, uh, my favorite uncle, by the way, noticed something during one of her attacks. He was looking out the window. He noticed that every time that my aunt experienced one of these attacks, he could see in the very far distance, a small little dot of light coming down the mountain. It wasn't like a magical light, if that's what you're thinking, or anything like that. It was more like a little flame, almost. It's witchcraft, he would say. At first, nobody believed him, because he was always such a huge troll, always playing pranks and having a dark sense of humor. And when they were successful, he would let out this hilarious belly laugh that sounded kind of like a troll. But one night, he brought the rest of the family to the window, and they all saw it. The attacks continued for the next days. Each night, my uncle would observe the little light. This time, he noticed that the light had a sort of galloping motion to it, as if it were a torch that someone was carrying on a horse coming down the mountain. The attacks continued, and the flame kept going down the mountain every night at the same time, at the same pace. One morning, my dad, my uncle, and a nearby neighbor decided that they would ride up the mountains at around midnight at the same time the strange events occurred. It was around 11 p.m. that night, when they readied the horses and rode off into the woods. It would take them about an hour to reach the point where the torch would come to before it disappeared. It was midnight, and the group was approaching the point where the torch would be, but all of a sudden, out of the blue, the horses just stopped. 
It's as if they had hit an invisible wall. They had to hop off the horses because they wouldn't keep still and kept neighing and just being disobedient. When they got off the horses, they began to hear this growling sound coming from the trees all around them. Its growl wasn't just coming from one place, but it seemed to be coming from every direction all at once, even in their heads. It just filled the air. My uncle, dad, and neighbor had no protection, no weapons on them, so they just got out of there and came back. The very next thing they did that morning was contacted a priest from the village to come and bless the house and take a look at my aunt. At the end of the week, my aunt ended up moving into the city with her other family in hopes that the attacks would stop. Thankfully, this worked, and my aunt never experienced anything like this ever again. I'm not sure if they were ever able to figure out what it was, or if somebody had cursed my aunt, but that's all the details from the story that I know based on what my family has told me. Their stories all line up. Nobody lives in that farmhouse anymore, but we still own the land. No one has really gone there since they moved out. In the summer of 2015, I was going on a fishing trip with my dad and three friends, Peter, Andrew, and Jason. We live in northern Indiana, so we decide to go to Lake Potoka Marina. Dad invites his friend that he always gets drunk with, and I think, well, it'll be time for all of us to chill in the woods or something. So us cool younglings agree that once we get there, we will leave and explore the woods. We get there a little bit later in the day, around 5. Dad decides not to fish until the next morning and decides to get drunk with his friend in a cabin that they rented for the night. Now we can leave. Dad doesn't mind that we take his truck. He just says to come back before midnight. Usually, my dad wouldn't let me leave like this, but... He's getting drunk with his friend, so it's whatever. Anyways, we drive around some random roads, and eventually, we get to road 231. We then continue down this road until we notice that it stops. It stops, but there's woods all around, which is what we wanted. We decide to drive the truck a little bit into the woods and leave it there. Now, a note here is that it was sunset by this point. So we walk into the woods, ignoring that any monster or crackhead hillbillies will try and do anything to us. We walk for about 30 minutes. It's definitely dark now, especially this deep in the woods. We had two flashlights and our phone lights, but it was still pretty dark even with that. We come to this weird looking cut down tree and two of my friends decided that they wanted to smoke a blunt. I didn't, though. Before they even rolled it, we hear knocking on trees nearby. We wait to see if it happens again, but it doesn't. So we just shake it off, like Taylor Swift. Just kidding. We shake it off and just kind of pretend that it was just woods sounds. Peter eventually rolls a really terrible blunt, and he and Jason smoke it together. We continue walking, and decide that we will continue until we reach Lake Patoka. We keep walking until we hear the knocking again. We're a little spooked now, because we believe that it could be somebody following us. Jason yells for whoever it is to come out. Everybody tells him immediately to shut up because we don't want to screw around with anybody, especially when our only protection is Andrew's crappy handgun. So we keep walking now. We're definitely aware that there's knocking on the trees a lot more often now. It keeps getting louder. Jason constantly keeps looking back and saying random stuff every time there's a knock. After a knock, he'll say, 
Bet you won't come out and face us, pussy. Stuff like that. We stop after we hear something in the bushes. We hear branches breaking as well. We stand there for about five minutes, waiting for something awful to happen. Eventually, we decide that it could have been a raccoon, maybe a small animal, so we keep walking slowly. We hear footsteps, and then it's as if there's a big dog running around. At this point, all of us are terrified. We continue walking, though. Speed walking, that is. We don't want to run in case whatever it is comes out of nowhere and just jumps us. We actually think like normal human beings and stop. We decide to go back instead. Peter freaks out, saying that he doesn't want to go back, especially not with that thing back there. I convince him that it's a better shot than staying in the woods with whatever it might be. As soon as we are going to head back, we hear this laughter, this weird hyena-like sounding laughter. As soon as we hear this, we convince ourselves that it's just some asshole screwing around with us. Andrew takes his gun out. He walks with it in front of him, and the laughter just keeps going. We're thinking now, how big is this guy's laugh box? He's been laughing for like 30 seconds straight. It continues, and Jason eventually gets mad and grabs a branch and throws it in the direction that the laughing is coming from. The laughter stops. We realize now that besides that laughter, there was literally no noise in these woods. Nothing. No crickets, birds, anything. Jason yells out something like, Leave us alone, you dick. This isn't funny anymore. Ten seconds later, we hear this roar. No joke. It sounded like, almost like a lion mixed with an elephant growl. It was just really loud. That's a poor description, but just picture the loudest roar you've ever heard. We just run for it. As we are all running, they begin to leave me behind because my cardio is terrible and I'm kind of chubby. I yell at them to wait, but they are scared. Adrenaline is carrying them and they're hauling ass. I think, well, so much for my gun protection. They eventually leave me behind, but what they didn't know was that I had the key to the truck. I stop for a minute to catch my breath. I hear something running behind me. It still sounds like a big dog. For some reason, I couldn't move. It's as if I just stood there and accepted that whatever it was was going to kill me. I just stare, and I see this weird human-like person running on all fours straight at me. I couldn't move. I couldn't speak. This thing was so fast. And then, I get shoved. I turn around. It's Andrew. He sees the thing coming. He has a look of terror on his face. He pulls me to run. We run for five minutes straight. I literally have no idea how my fat ass did that, but I did. We just jogged and came across Jason and Peter. We're all together now and we didn't hear the thing behind us anymore. We still were not taking our chances. We speed walk for a breather and then just jog back. We hear the hyena laughter again and we sprint. Peter runs back. We all yell at him and then try to catch up to him. We actually had to push him down to stop him, to pick him up and then run again. The hyena laughter doesn't stop it keeps getting louder. We run and run, but the damn woods just never seem to end. Even though we didn't think that we were really deep, deep in the woods, the hyena laughter turns into just a scream with no discernible features. Then we hear the roar again at the tail end. 
But this time, we basically shit a brick because we heard the roar twice and the laughter at the same time. Either this thing can just do that and make those noises, or there's more than one out there. We eventually get to a tree that was broken down, and we turned. We saw these yellow eyes behind us, like a raccoon or a cat's when the light reflects it, except we didn't flash our flashlights at it. It was just looking at us. I flashed the light at it, and we finally see how these things look. It was basically like a human, but really skinny. The skin seemed to be stained a brown color and slimy looking like it was wet. It had a small amount of hair on its head and back and around its neck especially, kind of almost like a mane type thing. And its arms seemed longer than its legs. That must be how it runs on all fours. Once again, we just turn around and run. Jason yells to Andrew to stop being a pussy and shoot at it. Now, there's no need to because we finally did reach our truck. We get in, and I spend like two minutes. It wasn't actually that long, but it felt like it just looking for the keys. I freak out because I thought that I dropped them in the woods, but I found them in my back pocket. We get in. Once the lights turned on, and the thing was there standing. It was on its hind legs, just standing there. The arms just hanging down with these ungodly long fingers. It stood there as if it was analyzing what the truck was, as if it was confused. Peter was telling me, screaming at me to run it over, but I think I don't want to take the chance that it can be under our vehicle I put it in reverse, and I keep going into reverse until we get to the road. The thing was still just standing there. We see another one come out. The second one seemed larger, probably around six feet tall, and that one roared and pulled the other one. I don't have time to turn this truck around before they get to us. They run straight for us, and I pushed my foot as far as the pedal went on reverse. I was going way too fast in reverse. I almost thought that I was going to flip over somehow. These things were on the road, running on all fours toward us. Never have we been so scared in our lives. They eventually stop after about 30 seconds, as it's obvious they can't keep up. We reach a little ranch and finally turn the truck around. I then go 90 until I get to Red Hills Road. We keep going back, screaming at each other about what just happened. I tell Dad, and he laughs at it, and says, Okay, buddy, sure. Oh, we can go back tomorrow, maybe, and they'll still be there. He didn't believe us at all. But he was also a little drunk, too. We stayed up all night, just talking about it. We were going to call the police, call someone, but then we realized that they're going to get mad at us for going into the woods. Plus, who's going to believe four stupid ass college students, two of them having a marijuana buzz? We actually do talk about it all the time. We didn't just never talk to each other again, like some other people. We always tell people, but nobody believes us, or really seems to care. After that day, we never want to go back into those woods, ever. Or any woods, for that matter. Also, I had this nightmare not long ago, where that thing spoke to me. It was in my room. It was just doing that hyena laugh, and then it asked me if I liked its surprise. And I just kept repeating that over and over again. So, what'd you think of those? Let me know which one was your favorite one down in the comments. Do you have one of your own? 
I have an email in the description below that you can send them to if you'd like to. Down there as well is a PayPal and a Patreon if you would like to support the channel that way. But of course, just being here, watching the video, liking, subscribing, commenting is really great too. And if you like the channel, I'll put up a couple videos right here that you can watch. Whether you're new or you're a long time viewer, maybe you want to check them out. Anyways, with that, I thank you for joining me, and I thank you for pulling up a stump. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching, and remember to stay happy, healthy, and hydrated, the three H's of the channel.